Hi, we'd like to uh, welcome you all to Earl of Sandwich. Uh, I'm Steve Healy, the CEO of Earl of Sandwich. We're very proud and very pleased to open our first Earl of Sandwich here in St. Petersburg. Uh, we've been waiting for this day for a long time, and we're, uh, I can't tell you how excited we are to serve the, uh, the local residents of St. Petersburg. Um, we are the, the home of the world's greatest hot sandwich, so we are bringing the world's greatest hot sandwich to St. Petersburg. Um, we're also uh, proud that this is, uh, we're a Florida-based company. We're based out of Orlando. This is our ninth uh, Florida restaurant. And we have more restaurants planned uh, uh, in the Tampa Bay area. So we have another store over at uh, International Plaza and have plans for more to come. So again, very pleased to be here. Uh, we are a neighborhood restaurant and we're very thrilled to be a part of the community. So thank you so much for coming out for our grand opening. And so I'd like to uh, turn it over to uh, Rick Kreisman, the mayor of St. Petersburg, uh, say a few words. Well, we are thrilled to have the Earl of Sandwich here in St. Petersburg. And you know, I want to encourage everybody uh, that sees this to come on down, check out their menu. I think you're going to be really impressed. Uh, with the variety that you have on there, there's, uh, if, if you're trying to stay gluten-free, you've got an opportunity to do that here. Uh, and it's a great price point, so it's affordable for, for everyone in the community. Uh, we are, you know, again, this is, in my mind, this is just a great, a great opportunity for the residents of St. Petersburg to really uh, enjoy some wonderful food and great hot sandwiches here. Uh, so we are thrilled to have another really quality business uh, calling St. Petersburg home. And we will do everything we can to not only help them survive, but as I like to say, we want you to thrive as the sun shines on us here again in St. Petersburg today. And we are so happy to have you guys here. Thank you, Thank you all so much. Thank you very much. Uh, I would also like to congratulate the Earl of Sandwich for coming. This is uh, my district. I'm Bill Dudley. I'm the uh, chair of the city council this year. And, and uh, this is a great addition to our neighborhood. Uh, I was telling them earlier that uh, when I moved to, to Florida, many, 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 many years ago. Um, I live five miles from where I came in this area here, and this is a great addition. Something that uh, Fourth Street is, is thriving, and uh, we have uh, a lot of great eating establishments, but i tell you, I just had a little sample inside. I'll be a local, I mean, I'll be a regular guy here. I, this, is, this is good. By the way, I did know the Earl of Sandwich. I'm not old. No, I'm just, but uh, anyway, congratulations on, on the opening and uh, many more. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Chris Steinacher, President and CEO of the St. Pete Chamber of Commerce. So I just wanted to uh, thank you all for coming out today. Uh, when the chamber gets to do ribbon cuttings, it means a lot of things for our community. Um, it means that uh, there are folks like Steve and his team that have invested in our community, and they've taken a corner that was unloved and, and brought some love to it and brought some investment to it. They also create a lot of jobs, and, and that's a really important part of our economy right now is getting people back to work. And uh, my understanding is we've hired a lot of good people. They've got the right crew to get started and uh, to serve the customers and and you saw coach Dudley he did the official tasting of it so we uh, we know it's going to be good stuff for us but we're just excited uh, when brands like the Earl uh, can be anywhere in the country and they are uh, that they choose st. Petersburg and um, the other part of it to know is it's exciting to have them move into this part of our neighborhood uh, while our downtown seems to be on fire and everybody wants to be there, uh, many of us live in these neighborhoods. This is my neighborhood. Uh, this is where my church is. This is where my gym is. And it's important to have all the assets right in your neighborhood. So that, and this is the kind of uh, community asset that makes every neighborhood of St. Pete the place to live. So uh, Steve and your entire team, thank you all for your investment in our community. Thanks for uh, continuing to improve what we uh, have as a quality of life. And we're excited to start eating. So let's get cutting. <laughs>
How's everybody doing? Welcome to the sundial. Huh? Thank you so much. This has been a long, long job and a, long, a lot of work, a lot of TLC, a lot of care going into taking this shopping center and turning it into something I'm very, very proud of. And I hope you'll enjoy it for years to come. Um, and when we started this, there were certain things that were on my list of things that I had to have. And um, fortunately, we've probably done about everything that I wanted to get accomplished, we've been able to accomplish. Um, I want to talk about, I want to give you some quotes about the gentleman I'm going to introduce, and I, I have to read these. So this is from the Miami Herald. To say Michael Mina takes food serious is like saying Tina Fey knows how to make people laugh. Uh, from Zagat, top restaurant rated and serving organizations. Impossible to get a bad meal at Michael Mina's exceptional American, new American restaurant. From Washington, Washingtonian, and in a town filled with power restaurants, bourbon steak reigns among the top. From the Las Vegas Magazine, Michael Mina is one of the most successful chefs in the business. From the San Francisco Chronicle, Mina is one of the city's shining lights. From fellow legendary chef taught English, Don is a great chef and one of the most warmest and generous, most giving people I know. And that's Don Pettibone who's sitting over here too, where he's over there. Um, at this point, I'm just proud and honored to be able to say that uh, we're getting ready to open up an amazing, amazing uh, market, restaurant, you name it. And, uh, and I'd like to introduce the person who's gonna make it all happen, Mr. Michael Mina. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for um, coming out today. And um, in this, uh, you know, we're from, Sa I'm from San Francisco, so this weather is a, is a blessing for me <laughs> when I'm out here. But I, I wanted to just take a moment and um, talk to you a little bit about how I was introduced to Bill Edwards and um, how I was introduced to St. Petersburg and to this project because, you know, um, I, I've been a believer all of my career in passion projects, and I really believe that, you know, to, you, to restaurants, markets, food, hospitality is really all about, you know, it, it's passion, and it's about people's vision, and it's about passion. And so every project that I try to get involved in I'm very conscious of who, who's going to, you know, who's driving it, who's going to be your partner in this project, and what's their vision and what's their passion. And when I, I really honestly did not know that much about St. Petersburg, I knew a little bit about it. I have two restaurants in Miami, um, one at the Turnberry in Aventura, and that's Bourbon Steak, and that's been there for six years and been very successful. And recently I opened a restaurant at the Fountain Blue called um, MM74, and soon we're going to open a third one at Fountain Blue. So, so I really have fallen in love with Florida. It's, uh, every, uh, my family comes out here and says, when are we moving to, <laughs> to Miami where it's warm? But, um, but um, I was given the opportunity through a great friend of mine, Larry Rubo. He said, I want you to meet my friend Bill Edwards. He said, just, you know, he, he, he has this project that he's, putting together, and I think that you would, you would be a great fit um, to do something there. And so I was introduced to Bill, and I came to St. Petersburg, and we spent a day together, and I fell in love with the passion that this was all about. Everything that I, we talked about was about how, what the, what, how, how's the concrete going to be laid on the floor? It's going to be tiles instead of concrete. Everything was about taking this vision and taking it to the next level. And so at the time, we were talking about us doing a restaurant, me doing a restaurant here. And um, as we were going through the plans and going through his vision for the whole project, I saw this great space that he was, had said he, was, he wanted to do a market. And it just so happened that my lifelong friend and um, one of the greatest chefs in the United States, Don Pentabona, who's right next to me, who is the chef that I worked for 
um, when I was uh, just, just graduated from school and uh, was a very shy and very scared young little cook and, and Don took me under his wing and we've been best friends ever since. Um, we had a vision and we had worked on a project for over two, two and a half years of collaborating and putting together this market space and trying to take a traditional market and turn it on its head a little bit and just turn it upside down and do some things that we've always, that we've always felt were really important about a market. And, but really starting with the core of it is me being from the West Coast and being from California and really um, cooking a lot of American and California, you know, using a lot of California product and a lot of product from the West Coast. We're very, you know, on, on the West Coast, it's, it's product, 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 seasonality, seasonality. And then Don being from the East Coast and having a very Italian, um, you know, background and, you know, California, the food in California is, is obviously um, very interesting because it's very product driven, but a lot of, you know, the roots of it are really that, that product and simplicity comes from Italian cooking. And we always said, you know, we wanted to do this by coastal market. We wanted to do a marketplace where it was very focused on product and very focused on seasonality and technique. And you're going to hear us talk about that over and over and over again as you hear more and more about locale and about the market is, you know, taking a, a really great focus on bringing in products because seasonality now in the United States, it's, it's amazing what, you know, some of the great stores have done, whether it's Whole Foods or other markets that have really brought a, a great consciousness to people about seasonality. And I think seasonality now even goes a step further. I think seasonality now, we, we look at it as 12, 12 seasons. Every month, there's new product. There's product that's around for three weeks, four weeks. And, you know, the great thing about seasonality is it does so much for you as a chef and as a consumer because you're buying things, you're buying products that taste much better when they're in season and you're getting them at, you know, you're getting them at, at what, they sh what you should be charged for them because when they're in season, they're a lot less expensive. And so that's why there's been such a focus, I think, over the last, you know, five, you know, somewhere between the last five years about seasonality. And that's one of the things that we're really going to focus on at, um, here at Locale. And another thing um, that I want to touch on real quick is that's really going to be a big component of it of the of the store is the prepared and semi-prepared foods, the hot and cold prepared foods. That's another thing that we really feel um, it can be can be vastly improved. And one of the when you look at the designs over here and you really start to understand how we've laid this out and how the floor plan works and what the experience is gonna be for the shopper and for somebody coming in and shopping through this market, we want it to be an experience. We want, we want you to come in here just to get lost, just to enjoy yourself, just to say, wow, this is, uh, you know, this is not my typical shopping experience. Um, and the great thing about food is, you know, food has a great sex appeal to it and, and helps do that. But what we really wanted to provide with some of the experiences is when a, a lot of times when you go to stores and, the, and there's prepared foods, they, they're sitting in a steam table and people are bringing things out from the kitchen and putting them in. We, we really wanted to focus on the hospitality side of this, of the interaction of, of our guests with the food. And so what we did is we really combined areas. So if you come up to the, to the meat counter, you've got one side of it is the meat counter, and then the other side of it is cold prepared food, and then the other side of it is where they're cooking everything. And so it's like a little, you know, it's a, it's a little rectangle shaped area, but everything is being done in one area. So you, that you can get, you can not only purchase, you know, your great cuts of meat and everything else, but you can also watch how the chefs are cooking it, get your food right off of the grill, so it hasn't been sitting around in a steam table and really work on that elevation of the prepared food side of this as well. And then we have a, a little restaurant. Um, we're gonna call it a little restaurant in there called, <laughs> called Farm Table. And again, this will be very focused on seasonal, great, healthy, um, 
health conscious, but you know, great food. Just really, um, Don and me, when we, whenever we've collaborated on food, it's always been about food that you want to share with your family. And that's what, that's what, you know, that's the way we're looking at this restaurant. It's going to be food that makes you feel good after you, after you eat it, but it's the t style of food that makes it really fun for you to sit down and dine together. But again, very focused on, tech, on all the techniques and the seasonality and, you know, the best product that we can, that we can procure. And, and um, being in, having spent some time now in Florida with the restaurants, you know, it's interesting because we have found some great local products. And I think that people, you know, people maybe don't associate Florida with a lot of product, but there is a lot of good products here. There's great seafood here. And so all of that will be featured here as well. So um, we'll have plenty of time for more questions, but I wanted to give you a little bit of the color of it and, and what, you know, really what the goals are here. And then I wanted to take a moment to introduce you to my best friend, a great chef, um, and a person that you'll be seeing often here because Don has relocated here. So, Don Pintabona. Thank you, that was great. I think you pretty much covered it. That was good. No. You know, I just wanted to thank everybody for coming down and then thank Bill Edwards, of course, for his vision, his confidence and support for our vision for the market. It's a really exciting time and everybody is very excited to get the market open, build it. It's going to be a lot of work, but for me, on another level, on several levels, it's actually coming full circle <clears throat> because I feel like I'm back home. I, I, you know, years ago, I started cooking here when I answered an ad in the Tampa Tribune as a freshman at USF, back when we called ourselves the Fighting Brahmins. Uh, and I took a job at the Seawolf restaurant on Bush Boulevard. So I've started cooking here and have since moved on. I, from USF, uh, when I realized that in my accounting courses, I thought about nothing but dishes I was going to cook that night, I figured, you know what, this doesn't make sense. Let me go to a cooking school. So I went to the Culinary Institute of America, which is also where Michael went. And I'd like to introduce somebody, if Michael, if you could just stand for a second. Uh, Michael Salmon is someone I met at the school. <laughs> Michael. <laughs> Michael will be the director of operations, so he's moved here as well. So he's a face that everyone will see from, from day one. He comes to us not only with a culinary background, but an enormous amount of retail background at some great places in New York City and elsewhere. So we're very excited to have Michael on board. But uh, so after the Culinary Institute, just to make it brief, I mean, I, I worked on three continents, visited 40 or 50 countries, and studied food throughout the world, and uh, you know, built up a lot, of, a big repertoire of things that I love, and seen people in many different settings and how they enjoy food. And after all that, I've come back, and I've, I want to thank friends. I've got friends in the audience here who have welcomed me back like I've never left. So this has always felt like home to me, and I'm just thrilled to be back. And um, collaborating with um, my closest friend, Michael, has been great. We've talked about collaborating on a project for a long time. This is one that's very dear to our heart. And another level of me coming full circle is the type of business that we're opening. I grew up in a, in a Sicilian-American family in, in, in New York, and my dad ran markets for over 50 years. So since I was a small child, way before labor laws, I worked for my dad and at, at his knee. So, you know, it's very interesting. And as Michael and I have collaborated on, you know, what we want this market to be, and, you know, the ultimate questions that we ask ourselves that everyone else asks is, how are you going to be different? You know, how will you be different from the other places? And I always see myself, you know, looking back a little bit. All right, so what was it like 40 years ago when I worked for my dad? And what was it like now? And food is so, so very different. You know, in the, in the documentary uh, Food, Inc., for example, there's a, there's, a, there's a quote in there that always stuck with me. And it's amazing, but uh, the, the claim was that food, the way we consume food, has changed more in the last 50 years than it had in the previous 10,000 years before that. So that's, a, that's, a, that's an enormous claim. So as we're developing this, you know, I'm remembering that folks that were coming into my dad's market, you know, there was a, there was a trust factor and there was a respect factor. So if they wanted to find the perfectly ripe fruit, perfectly ripe melon, they knew they could get that. They could come to my dad to say, look, what's the right cut of meat for this recipe? Or the local fish, you know, they knew that they could trust, and, and that's how it was a long time ago. So this is something that's very dear to us, and this is something we plan to work very hard to earn the trust, to, to earn the respect, and we know we have to do that. So that's a big part of it. 
and you know, just the way people shop. You know, when I was a kid, I can remember my Sicilian grandmother taking me by the hand every single day to walk to the Farmer Joel's. It was the, the local farmer market every single day. And we'd buy vegetables for that day. And as I got older, I remember turning to her and said, Grandma, can we just go once a week and buy a lot and then call it a day? But that's not the way they did it back then. You know, you, 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 the thought of buying vegetables today that you were going to consume several days ahead just wasn't, wasn't a thought. So here, you know, we're not expecting people to shop every day, but because we are going to deal direct from the farms, from the fishermen, you may see something on a Friday that wasn't there a week before or four days before. So there's always new discoveries. So, we, you know, I've been on the ground for about a little more than a month now, rekindling old friendships, making new friendships, but a big part of it for me is connecting with the local farmers, connecting with the ranchers and the fishermen and the artisans. That's a big part of what we're going to do here. So I see that as a very important role and also connecting with the community. I visited a Title I school last week who has this wonderful Peace Patch program, the gardens at the schools, fantastic. I've seen some great urban agricultural projects that are underway. So these are all things that we want to learn more about, participate in, and partner in being part of the community and making this a neighborhood market, just like my dad used to run, is something that's very dear. So again, I know that we're going to take questions and there's going to be time for that. So I just wanted to thank you all again. And we very, very much look forward to opening. See you in the fall. A uh, couple of things. Again, what do you think? Huh? You doing all right? Thank you. Second, Michael's got about 40 of his latest cookbooks that he'd be happy to sign if you'd like to come over here after and have to say hello to him. He'll be sitting at that table. He'd be happy to sign whatever he's got for you all. And uh, hop in line if you want a cookbook. And thank you so much for being here and the best is yet to come. Thank you again. Thank you.